proper equation for the binomial distribution, which is binome.dist.range. Now, with the binomial distribution, it's got this newer function than we had with the Poisson distribution we talked about before. So you can actually, there's a binome.dist and there's a binome.dist.range. The dot .range is designed to have more flexibility and it's also uh, could give you like the spill array kind of function. But the other function is still useful and it might, it might uh, because it might get, be more similar to what you're used to with regards to having a cumulative component, the last argument being cumulative versus not cumulative. So we'll look at both of them in a little bit more in Excel and in future presentations here, but we're using the latest and greatest one uh, for this first example, which is binome.dist.range. So then we have the trials. So the trials are gonna be, uh, gonna be the five here, and then the probability is 10% per trial, and then the numbers that we're gonna have is gonna be this range, that what this, what this hashtag is, it's gonna spill out uh, the, it's gonna spill it out here. So the likelihood then of having zero successes is gonna be 59.05. The likelihood of having one success out of the five is 32.81, two successes, uh, 7.29 uh, successes, and so on and so forth. It's quite unlikely that we're gonna have four successes because each sales call that we have, we only have a 10% chance of success and getting four out of five would be very, you know, fairly unlikely in that case. Now, we wanna just get an idea of, of if we were to graph this now. So now we've got N one through five and we've got the percent likelihood going up to around uh, 60 for zero, getting zero out of five, one out of five, two out of five, and so on. So you can see you get a curve that looks something uh, like this. And now we just wanna get an idea, a feel for the curve as it changes when we change these variables of N and P. So if I was to change these variables to uh, 10 versus five, notice now my X column in Excel, because I used this cool sequence formula, will actually populate automatically down to 10. And because I used a spill array, the fancy spill array formula for the binome.dist.range, this will spill automatically. So, so that's what's kind of nice about those formulas. And you can practice that in our Excel presentation because it'll, it'll populate this automatically. Now on the chart, it will actually populate automatically as well, but you might have to copy down the chart data range to make sure it picks up the full data range down to 10. From uh, from the binome.dist standpoint, you can see it looks like this up top because it's stopping at zero, right? And now when you're moving it to the right, it's looking, it's gonna approximate more of a bell-shaped curve. So now that I've, I've increased that. So if I do it again, I increased N to 20, P still at 10%. Now we can see it's moving to the right and it's looking more bell-shaped, still being kind of cut off on that left side. And then if I increase it again, and to be 50 now it's out here kind of in the middle and you've got something that looks you know fairly bell-shaped that's that's going to be the general uh the general trend when you're when we look at these curves if i if i then plot this one back to five but i increase p from i believe 10 what it was before to 20 now we've got uh now we've got it being cut off again over here, uh, and, it, and it looks a little less kind of bell-shaped. If I increase it from from P of 40, probability of 40, to probability of 240%, then it, again, it kind of moves to the right and you can see it's getting uh, more of a bell-shaped uh, type of look here. And if we analyze this, of course, if P is 40%, then the likelihood that we get zero calls, zero successes out of five is now 7.8. Seven eight. The likelihood that we get one success is 25.92. The likelihood that we get two successes, 34.56. If I'm thinking about the likelihood that I get from zero to two successes, I would add these up, right? 34.56, 25.92 plus 7.78. If I added that right, 68.26. I'm not totally sure I added it right, but that would, that's the idea. We'll talk more about that in future presentations. Right now, we're just kind of focused on what the curve looks like. So if I then, if I move this up to 50%, now you've got something, again, looks somewhat more bell-shaped. 
So as we increase N or, or P, as we increase them, then we tend to get something that, that starts to look uh, more bell-shaped. That's, that's the general trend that you will see. In future presentations, we'll get more into detail with some actual kind of uh, more scenario-based problems.